I remember maybe about a year and a half ago, you had come out to help a seller I was working with because a buyer that was interested in their home had someone come out and measured their home and the numbers were crazy with what they said the deflection was and how many piers were needed. Subsequently, I had called you, you had come out, you did the measurement, and the engineer did not take into consideration the fact that there were hardwood floors. Oh, is that right? In one area of the home. Yeah. So explain to me what that means also, so our viewers can, can understand that a little bit. Yeah, well, there's, there's a couple of aspects to that. I mean, if, if you have, remember, remember we're measuring the levelness of the slab. If you've got tile and hardwoods and carpet and sunken living rooms, all of that needs to be normalized out. In order to normalize the elevation measurements, we will add or subtract out the heights of the floor coverings. And that's really easy to do. One of the things that some foundation repair contractors will do is they will find the highest point in the house. And it might be way over here in this weird spot in this back bedroom where that's, <laughs> where that's the highest point. And that, that makes all their other numbers look really low. Oh, my gosh. Right? So they'll say, well, you're, really, you know, you're down two inches over here along this front. Well, that's because he happened to zero out on that high spot back there that made all these numbers look really low. That seems so wrong and intentional. <laughs> you know, they're not all like that. But I've been around long enough to see that a lot of, the vast majority of them are. Typically the ones that you've heard about, and I'm just saying from the radio, we, you know, we've all kind of heard of the big four or five. They don't typically do that kind of stuff. But, but you do get that kind of stuff from the, the middle tier yeah, it's unfortunate, which is why I want to give my clients knowledge on how to make the best decisions moving forward for their home. The um, Generally, for a normal size home in this area, I don't start to consider repairs as needed until my measurements are like minus two and a half. Okay. So when you, when you get that contractor's proposal and you see a picture of your house and you see all those numbers, if, if you're seeing anything less than minus 2.5, that's an indication that maybe you're getting it sold. If you're seeing minus 1, minus a half, right. minus, minus 1.5, you know, keep some perspective. Like, that's an inch, you know. Right. Right? That's and not a lot. They'll peer, I've seen peer this up all day long. Oh I my mean, goodness. That's two inches. So we're not talking about a lot. We're not talking about a lot. So, you know, look, look for your, look for the minus two and a halfs and worse. And also, doing this for so long, and of course I'm not an engineer, but I can pretty much walk into a home and feel a floor moving or yep. see something significant and then feel a slope or see a repair in, in drywall. But I mean, if it's, if it's two and a half, three and a half, a lot of times I think someone can actually walk a home or walk in a corner mm -hmm. and feel it. That's true. That's, that's also the death trap. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, to all the home inspectors that are out there, that's the home inspector's nightmare. So, kind of again with our little foundation here, there's two ways it can move. We talked about the bendiness. Okay. That's called deflection. And remember, we were measuring how much it's bent, not how low it is, but how much is it bent. The other measurement is called tilt. So, this foundation can be tilted like that or like that. Now, was it tilted during construction, or did it tilt over time? I very rarely go with it was built that way. I have before once or twice in you know, like 30,000 inspections, 
and I have seen them built at a level, but that's so rare. Okay. So, so what causes the tilt like that? Well, that's a great question. Older homes, like in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, were built really flexible. They were, they were only, they're not very stiff. And any little soil movement causes them to, they're like wet noodles. They'd move everywhere. Okay, that's a good, that's a good analogy. Newer homes are a lot stiffer. They, they don't bend. Like they're deep, they're deep and strong and stiff, and they don't bend. They just tilt. Tilt. Right? Ah, okay. They, they don't bend. And, and so the tolerance for tilt is 1%. Now, in the engineering documents, the criteria says slopes become noticeable at 1%. Okay. Not in need of repair, that just slopes become noticeable. And that's true. In my experience, when I measure homes that are 1%, that's when I can start feeling them. But the problem is, you can have a home that's tilted, and on a normal size home, if it's tilted 1%, it's probably off level six to eight inches overall. Okay. Wow, that seems that's a lot. significant. That's right. Six to eight inches are the kind of numbers that we talk about when foundations need repair. If we're talking about one inch, that does not need to be repaired. One percent. Yeah. So, yeah. The problem is when it's tilted like this, notice that there's no stress on the foundation. Like the foundation is not bent. It's not being cracked. No, not failing. No doors are out of square, no sheetrock cracks, no brick cracks, the brick line is straight. Like when the house is tilted, there's very little distress. The whole house just tilts together. So is there anything that you do to correct that? The concern is noticing it because when you're walking through the floor plan, unless you have a straight shot, sometimes it's hard to pick up on those slopes. You don't notice them. You're going down hallways, you're going into the bedroom, into the bathroom. You're not walking straight enough to, to feel notice it. it, to feel it. That's right. And there's no cracks. All the doors work. And it happens all the time. And that doesn't mean there's a problem. It just means there's a tilt. Or does that mean there's it a could. problem? If it's tilted 0.3, 0.4%, that's probably okay. But if you're dealing with a 1% tilt, it's perfectly livable but you will have a problem selling it. So what do you do to remedy that? Do you tilt, do you peer well, you, you the would have untilted to, side? You would have to peer the entire house. You would have to peer the entire house. Kind of, as like, if it was a heave. That's right. Because it's, it's also kind of like, and you can answer this question, is this side of this pencil high or is this side of this pencil low? To me, the side is high. You don't the know, right though. side is high. But it's like, this is a glass half empty, half That's full. That's right. I think this side is low. But my so point is, is, you don't know if it's this side moving up or that side moving down. You don't know which way it's going. And so the only way to fix it, and the worst thing you can do, some contractors will come in and they'll want to just peer up right along the low side. You don't, that, you don't want to do that because then you're actually bending it. If you tried to lift way out here, you know, you're, you're inducing bendiness, stress. Adding stress. The only way to fix a tilt is to lift the entire house up. That's when you get into your 50 and 60 peer counts. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to view other helpful tips, click here. If you would like to view a neighborhood we specialize in, click here. And to subscribe and stay updated, click on the circle below. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.